Let's play a quick exercise, shall we? Who did you want to be when you're five years old? Who did you want to be when you're five years old? Next question. Who do you want to be today? Who do you want to be today? Drop your answer in the comment section below. I'd love to know what your answers are, who you want to be at five years old, and what do you want to be today? I'll give you my answer to those two questions as we begin this episode of How to Think Like a Millionaire. Happening in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? My name's Smart Guy, Matt Cipolli here, hailing to you from the Valuetainment Studios, not my normal seven-figure squad studio in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, Chicago, but here at the Valuetainment Studio here, the desk of Adam Sosnick, you know, VT Economics, Sauce Loves Money, you know, all that good stuff. And by the way, you need to check out this episode here at Sauce as he talks about money. Check him out. But I want you to know that I'm excited about this episode because so many people are asking questions about, man, how do we get ahead financially, COVID-19, pandemic? But this is an opportunity for you right now to get better, to start thinking differently than everybody else, and hopefully getting on a track to getting your spot here on the Seven Figure Squad of being a cash flow first generation millionaire. So before I begin, let me tell you a quick story about my son and I, Jordan. Today, he's 19 months old, okay? And uh, obviously, Halloween is coming up, and we uh, purchased some costumes. Even though Halloween is canceled this year, we purchased some costumes anyway. And since I spent some time with Damon John here, uh, we, uh, uh, we spent some time with the shark, the people shark, uh, of Shark Tank and, and an owner, creator, founder of FUBU. Uh, he uh, got a Shark Tank outfit. Now, based on that Shark Tank costume, we also presented him another option. Jordan said, hey, Jordan, you want to be a shark or do you want to be his favorite character, Elmo? Why? Because his favorite song is Elmo's Happy Dance. What am I talking about? Happy, happy dance, dance. Happy, happy dance, dance. When we learn something new, we do the happy dance, dance. See, that's Jordan's favorite song. And so that being said, one of the first things he said outside of mommy, dada, Lola, Lolo, Jojo, he said, Emma. Emma. <laughs> what? 19 months old, he's already saying new characters' names in his life. Now, with that being said, you ask yourself, what, what does it have to do with me thinking like a millionaire? It's got everything to do with you thinking like a millionaire. Now, let me give you my answer to the question we began this exercise with about what Matt Sapala, money smart guy, wanted to be at five years old versus who he wants to be today. So when I was five years old, I grew up during the late 70s, uh, 80s, uh, 90s. That was my era of growing up. Who did I want to be? I want to be Michael Jordan, man. Who doesn't want to be like Mike? Who doesn't want to be like Walter Payton, sweetness of the Chicago Bears? That's who I want to be. I want to be an athlete. So you want to know who I want to be today? Okay, let me give a personal uh, answer to that question. I want to be the greatest kid that God has ever seen on earth. I want to have a relationship with my God, my Savior. Right? I, I don't care uh, uh, what anybody has to say about me. I care about one person's, uh, one person's approval of me. I want to be a great husband. I want to make sure I'm there for Sheena to serve God, to serve my wife, to be there as a, as a father. Not to be this to say be around my kids all the time, but be a great example for them because I don't equate being a great example of being around my kids 24-7. I want to be a great example for them when they see their father. They see, man, that's a dad. That's a, that's a guy that inspires me. He's, uh, he's doing this in life. Nobody ever, uh, nobody ever gave him anything. I can be who I want to be. I want to be that example to my kids. Uh, I want to be a great, great entrepreneur. I want to be an example for people who aspire to go from nowhere to summer, scratch to success, chump to champ. I'm going to be all these different things. So let's revisit the story of my son, Jordan, saying Elmo, even though he's wearing a shark outfit, right? Here's the reality. I know probably at two, three, four, five years old, he'll want to be Elmo. Maybe six years old, Elmo. Seven years old, Elmo. But eight, nine, ten, he might want to be something differently. Teens, definitely somebody differently. Twenties, thirties, definitely somebody differently when he's a young man, a grown man, has his own family, he's got his own future. So here's the thing, what evolves is this. What will change with our lives is experience, what changes with our life is language, and what changes with our life is crowd. So if you are watching this, you said, man, I want to be a cash flow first generation millionaire. The question you got to ask yourself is this, what type of experiences are you exposing yourself to? What type of experiences have you had? And what is the good and the bad and potentially the ugly of the experience that you had? And how can the silver lining come up and through those experiences to allow you to say, you know what? I value this. I value that. I appreciate this. Everything I've uh, done has led me to, to, to a position like this. That things didn't happen to me. That happened for me. These experiences are things that let you say, okay, what's the best out of it? And how can I still use these lessons to become a first generation cash flow millionaire? What about the people that you've been surrounded with? What about, what about the language? I remember growing up in a language where, you know, shut the door. Uh, uh, you're letting all the air conditioning out. Shut the windows. You're letting all the heat out. 
uh, uh, turn off the faucet uh, because uh, do you, could you imagine what the bill is going to be? Could you turn off the lights? Our electric bill, you're, right, you're, you're raising our electric bill. These are the type of language. Your plate, finish your food. You know how many people love to have your food and there's a bunch of starving kids that don't have the food you have and eat your food. Finish your plate. These type of things. You're in a, gro- you're in a grocery store. Hey, man, put that back. We ain't got no money for that. We ain't got time for that. D- this is language. It's either language I call broken ease because this language allows you to be broke or is a language millionese. <laughs> a language that allows you to become a millionaire, to think bi- differently and to speak differently and to expect differently. And last but not least, the people that, you, that you're hanging around with. You know, oftentimes we find ourselves in the right, right, the right friends but the wrong crowd. You know what I mean? The right friends but the wrong crowd. The fr- friends that you can be down with, uh, you, you, can, you can hang with, you grew up with, you, you see, uh, seek some comfort and they're a sounding board for you, but they may be the wrong crowd for you to grow with. Your friends are your friends, but your friends at, at the next level in terms of your next level of your life, if they don't want to grow, you got to pick a right crowd to be around them. So here's the harsh reality, my friends. If it happened to me, these experiences, this crowd, this language happened to me, and it's happened to many, many other cash flow first generation millionaires and deck of millionaires and billionaires. If they've had to make tough choices and they've had to do it to get through this process, guess what? You got to do it too as well. So before I let you go, let me leave you three points on how to think like a millionaire. Number one, remember this acronym, TFA equals R. What? TFA equals R. What am I talking about? Thoughts, feelings, actions equals results. I got this acronym from this book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. Talking about the blueprint that we've been growing up with, the blueprint that we've been processing information with, the blueprint of how we feel about money. Because your thoughts becomes feelings, becomes actions, and then they equal results. So your thoughts, feelings, actions, results. Think about your thoughts about money. Think about how you feel about money. Think about how you feel about money. Think about what your actions are towards money and what are your exact results. So if you process the, the, the conversation you have with your spouse, the conversation you have with yourself, the language that you're putting yourself forth into, because before it comes out, before your language comes out, you got to be talking to the first person you talk to, which is yourself, your inner language, because your inner language becomes feelings, and those feelings become outer language, and guess what? Just because the things that you're hearing and the things you're putting out there, it can either serve you or they cannot serve you. You know, there, there's a saying out there that said that most people's self-talk, 70 to 80 percent of it, sadly, is negative. Think about that real quick. A lot of people are hard on themselves. They're tough on themselves. You should be. But your language should also be encouraging, supportive of oneself. Because everybody else around you isn't giving the encouragement and support. Guess what you got to do? You can't get motivated. Motivated is external conversation, external language, external push. But inspiration, fire, the, the fire in the pit of your belly, the inspiration, the dog fight, that comes from within. The fire in your belly, that comes from within. And if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, you got to think differently about money. Hopefully in a progressive, positive way, not negative, so therefore you can feel different about money, so therefore your activity can be progressive, so therefore your results about money is more further towards a million dollar income, million dollar cash flow versus a negative credit score. So think about TFAR equals results. The second thing to be thinking about is who are you talking to? Do this quick exercise. Pick up your phone. Pick up your phone right now. Pick up your phone and go to both text messages and the last 10 people you called. The last 10 people you sent a text to and the last 10 people called. You got it? All right, here we go. Here's my question to you then. How many of them are making more money than you? How many of the last 10 people that you sent a text message to, that you said, that you actually called, are making more money than you? Who are you talking to? And if they're not making more money than you, guess what naturally is going to be happening to you? You're, you're going to have the same type of cash flow, attitude, language than they have. If you're talking to people that make you feel uncomfortable because they're making more money than you, if you got to stand up and sit up a little bit more straight because you're talking to somebody that you have a, a amount of, deep amount of respect for, you're looking at somebody's example and the results are much more further ahead than what you're currently doing right now, and you tend to perk up a little bit and you're paying attention to it, you should be talking to them more often. So the question you got to ask yourself is, who are you talking to? Be conscious of that. Number three, commitment is necessary for the long term. I'll give you an example. One of the features I love seeing on Facebook is Facebook memories. <laughs> Facebook memories, you know what I'm talking about? Like, what did you do a year ago today? What did you do five years ago today? What did you do, in this case, nine years ago today? Well, 
a Facebook memory has popped up in my Facebook profile, and this is the picture of who was in my life nine years ago based on Facebook memories. Okay? These guys just said, Matt, I'm all in. I want to do. I'm going to do business with you. I'm going to help you build an insurance agency. What's in it for me? I get to be a cash flow millionaire too as well. Boom, 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 boom. All these different things, okay? This picture comes up. Now, here's the reality. <laughs> None of these guys are in business with me today. Zero. Now, I don't know what they're doing. Matter of fact, they couldn't even last with me two, three months. It was tough. It was uncomfortable. People told them no. They faced rejection. Uh, they faced moments of not making sales, for the, so therefore they weren't making money. And they went back to doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, I wish I could do a documentary today of these three guys about where are they now? You ever see those on ESPN Sports or, or sports, uh, sports documentaries? Where are they now? Now, here's the thing. None of these guys are first-generation cash flow millionaires. None of these guys. But think about where they would be now with me if they stuck with this decision for the long term. I'm in a value team studio right now. We're having conversation with people with nine and 12 figures. We're having conversation with people that shock you and blow your mind at the top of conversations who we're having conversations with. These guys aren't with me, and they won't be with me. So many people that you decide to go in business with first, the people that you have your initial partnerships with, you gotta understand too, that a lot of people just don't have the staying power to deal with being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And that's the journey of being a first generation cash flow millionaire. So commitment for the long term is necessary. Before I let you go, I want you to read this book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. I'll put a link in the descriptions below. I want you to read this book, listen to it, audio, I don't care. Read it, consume it, help you understand the blueprint of becoming a millionaire by first, the mindset, the blueprint, the internal game that you have to shift in order for you to strategize, which is my second recommendation. Watch this video here, how to strategize on overcoming the guilt of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. A lot of people won't resonate with you, a lot of your friends, a lot of your family won't get you, the hours you gotta put in, the time you gotta put in, the skills and the craft you gotta undergo, they won't understand it, but here's a video for you to process and how to overcome that guilt when you decide to handle pressure, when you go into stress, when you go all these things to better your family. The next video I want you to watch is with my mentor CEO when we're on a yacht here in, in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm sorry, in Boca Raton. We're talking about all the different homes that's inside uh, this area in, in Florida and how different and significant it is because we're both military veterans. We both don't have a college degree, but yet uh, we're living a lifestyle that people would dream of simply because of the decisions, the thoughts, these things that we discussed here in this video has been a follow through of what we said a long time ago. With that being said, guys, this wraps up this video. I'd love to know what you're thinking. Drop it in the comment section below. Give me your feedback. Give me your biggest takeaway here about how you're starting to think differently, hopefully, about becoming a first-generation cash flow millionaire. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, like our Facebook business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications, be alerted next time we upload our next episode. Our journey is to 25,000 subscribers, so therefore, as soon as we get there, I'm giving out three books. Once we hit 25,000 subscribers, the first three people that we see uh, that are uh, dropping comments, that are subscribing and, and sharing our videos, that are first three people to get a reward from me to you, which is a signed copy of a Wall Street Journal's best-selling book, Your Next Five Moves, by my CEO mentor, Patrick Bet David. The first three people to do it, once you cross 25,000 subs, you'll get from me to you, our address to you, whatever address you want us to send us to, a signed copy of Wall Street Journal's number one best-selling book, Your Next Five Moves. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy here from the Value Team and Studios. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.